Okay, so we have a tree diagram. So firstly, we have to complete our tree diagram. So remember, with tree diagrams, we know that these two probabilities just here have to make a whole one. So um, we know that this one must be five sixths, because five sixths and one sixth make six sixths, which is a whole one. So here we have five sixths again. We know the chance of getting a four is one sixth. And we know that this also is 5, 6 here. So we've completed the tree diagram to start with for one mark. Now part B, it's a circle probability that both dice land on a 4, both of them. So um, the chance that the first dice lands on a 4 is a 6. The chance that the second dice lands on a 4 is also then a 6. And what we do is we multiply these together. So we work out a 6 multiplied by 6. Remember we multiply the correct branches together on a tree diagram. So 1 times 1 is 1, 6 times 6 is 36. So for this one here we circle a 36. Now for part C um, we have to work out the probability that at least one of the dice does not land on a 4. Now there's a long way of working this out or a short way. So I'm going to do the short way. So we know the chance of um, both dice landing on a 4. So work out probability that at least one of the dice does not land on a 4 is a whole 1, because all probabilities make a whole 1, subtract that 36. So a whole 1, take away 1 36, leaves 35 over 36. And that's two marks just there. As I said, there's a longer way, but you should get that as the final answer, even if you do it the other way. Right, next. So here we have a formula to use and we have to work out the value of a when x is minus 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work out each bracket. So firstly, um, I'm going to do minus 1, minus 4. So substituting x for minus 1. Now minus 1, minus 4 is minus 5. Second bracket, I have to do minus 1, add 3. So that's minus 2. And then underneath I need to work out minus 1, minus 1, and that would give me minus 2. So I've worked out what all the brackets are worth, so let's work out the numerator. So the numerator is two brackets multiplied together. So between those two brackets, even though it's not there, there is a multiplication sign. So the first bracket is minus 5. I have to times that by minus 2. That's the numerator. And the denominator, it's going to be minus 1, because that's what x is, multiply by the bracket, which is minus 2. So let's work these things out. So the numerator, minus 5 times minus 2 makes 10, because when you multiply two negatives, you get a positive answer. And the denominator, minus 1 times minus 2 gives 5. So we're left with 10 divided by 5. So the answer is 2. Now for part B, it says, um, when x is between 2 and 4, is the answer positive, 0, negative, or could it be either? So I think the best way of doing this is thinking, all right, well, x is between 2 and 4, so let me try it when x is 3. So like you did for A, let's work out the expression when x is 3. So all of the brackets, so I'm going to do 3 take away 4. So that's going to give me minus 1. I'm going to do 3 plus 3, because so that's the second bracket. And that's given me 6. And the denominator bracket is 3 take away 1, which is 2. So I've worked out all the brackets. So like in the same way I did for A, I'm going to work it out for B. So the top is the two brackets multiplied together. So it's going to be minus 1 multiplied by 6. The denominator is x, which I'm saying is 3, times by the bracket, which is 2. So let's work this out. Minus 1 times 6 gives us minus 6. 3 times 2 gives me 6. I'm doing a division. The answer is going to be minus 1 because one of the numbers is negative. The answer is negative. So that's how we should have circled. So that's the easy way of really thinking about that problem. X is between 2 and 4. So try a nice easy number between 2 and 4, which is really only 3. Work it out and see if it's positive or negative.